on the wall. On the seventh day of December, 1941, it struck the 11th hour. Every hour after that has been, will be, zero hour. 48 United States of a free and sovereign America are at war. Every American has his job to do, and the will to do it, and the tools to do it with. Pray God he also has the time. Time, the most vital natural resource of a country at war. Every tick of the clock is time won or lost. Every 60-minute sweep, every 12-hour tour of those relentless hands is turning out carload lots of time for us to use ourselves or to give away to the enemy. the scientific devices of chronology are machines manufacturing time. The tool that in our hands means victory. And our hands must be as relentless as the hands of our clocks. They cannot afford to be less. Sunrise over Republic Steel. High noon at Willow Run. Sunfall on the Electric Boat Company. Midnight at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Dawn to dusk and back to dawn again. Three eight-hour shifts, one day. So much can be done in a day if Americans will keep their sleeves rolled up. Inside of 24 hours, one twentieth of a freighter or a tanker can be built. Within those same 24 hours, a squadron of tanks can roll off the assembly line and a flight of bombers can be made ready from radio to rudder boat. In one day, a thousand acres of corn can become 30,000 bushels of food. In one day, one plant unit can turn out enough rifles to equip a battalion of infantry, the men who, in one day, might win a war or lose it. How? Well, let's visit upstate at a factory where they make 30 caliber rifle cartridges for the army. Let's visit Jean one of the girls who inspects these cartridges before they're shipped. She's a good kid, loves her country, and a guy named Joe. He gave her that pin she's wearing before he went to Australia. She's a good kid, honest, intelligent, but she gets tired in the afternoon sometimes, likes to take extra time off for a smoke. That's all, only a few minutes. A few minutes, it only takes a second to jar the primer out of a cartridge. And it only takes a second to put an OK ticket on a lot that should have been rejected. A cartridge without a primer is one that will never fire. It's about as useful in a rifle as a cigarette or as the minutes that go up in its smoke. One bad cartridge, one chance in a million to get by undetected, one second in 60, one girl out of a hundred who is an honest, patriotic, intelligent saboteur. Intelligent. intelligent enough to know that one of these bullets in good condition can travel three miles. But she doesn't know that a defective one can go halfway around the world. Somewhere in the Pacific, somewhere between the Devil and the Dutch East Indies, is an American scouting patrol.
bad about that cartridge missing fire. It should have been rejected. It would have been, too, if a girl named Jean hadn't taken time out to smoke. Now meet J.G., general manager of a large wholesale food house. Makes 12,000 a year. Worn a white collar all his life. That is, except for the cocky one he wore in 1918. Tried to get in this scrap after Pearl Harbor. But they said his son could handle the fighting orders, and he could go on taking food orders. Like this. 50 cases of 14A1. That's code for lifeboat provisions. Notify Martin. That means ship on Monday. Too old. Too old to fight, but not too old to work yourself silly trying to get out orders and priorities on time. Time? Holy mackerel. It's 2.30. I'll have to rush like old Harry to make it. Better tell Mabel where I'll be. Oh, no, no, no. Why bother? It's Saturday. That lifeboat stuff doesn't go out till Monday. Nothing can come up over the weekend. Besides, I've got an important engagement with a couple of guys. Important engagement with a couple of guys. A couple of guys on the home team. Well, they are leading the league, and it's his first Saturday off in four months. And there's nothing that can't wait nine innings. Nothing, that is, except time, time and tide, and convoys. A change in sailing orders, and an urgent wire in cold. Lifeboat supplies to be shipped at once. Shipped by a man who is busy coaching at first base. Unfortunately, a convoy can't wait for the last inning. A convoy waits for the tide. And the tide waits for no man. Standing beside a lifeboat, only partly provisioned, six American flyers sail for Ireland in convoy on a freighter that falls behind its escort. It's an old story. Two of them got there, one of them out of his mind, the other one dead. 25 days in a boat provisioned for 10 days. The tide rolls in, J.G., and the clock ticks on, and neither one, in peace or war, will wait for nine innings. The state of North Australia is 23 time zones away from the state of Michigan. But the clock on the cockpit of the plane over Darwin and the watch on the wrist of the officer in New Guinea are synchronized with the clock at the door of the factory in Detroit and geared to the clock over the water cooler in Kalamazoo. The production rate of our factories and the firing rate of our guns is synchronized by one machine, the clock. This is the machine that manufactures victory turning out 32 and a half million seconds each year. Each separate tick, a precious tool to use in building our future. And you, these are your tools, your hands, and they must be as relentless as the hands of your clocks. If we are to conquer, they cannot afford to be less. Oh, yeah. 